Hey everyone, hope things are going well for you guys. Today I'm going to show you how I painted my resin fine cast uh, Lord Caldor Drago model. As you can see in these pictures, there was a lot of flash to cut off. Um, however, it was relatively easy to remove it all because this resin, uh, basically a model knife cuts through it like hot butter basically. Here you can see I cleaned up all the parts just before um, assembling. I assembled the body but kept the arms off uh, temporarily because it's easier to paint the sword and the back of the shield when the arms are separated from the body. I began by priming the model Chaos Black. Basically Chaos Black is a great foundation color if you're painting silver armor on the model. As you can see here I primed all three parts of the model. I began with the four sword by base coating the sword Ultramarines Blue. I then went with the light purple by mixing a 2 to 1 ratio of ice blue to blood red in the center of the sword. I then painted a darker purple on the sword using a 1 to 1 mix of enchanted blue and blood red. Lastly, I painted lightning on the sword using skull white. This was accomplished by painting zigzag patterns all over the sword. I then painted the symbol on the center of the sword using chaos black paint. I started on the armor with a heavy dry brush of bolt gun metal. This will act as the foundation color of the armor. I made sure to paint both arms and both sides of each arm with the bolt gun metal. That way I got the inside of the parts that won't normally be painted if you assembled first and then painted second. I gave the entire model an azurman blue wash. This wash will not only provide a blue tinge under the armor, but will also give back some of the detail that might have been lost when doing the dry brush. I then did a lighter dry brush of the armor using chainmail. This dry brush brings back some of the lighter details on the edges of the model. I then did one more lighter highlight using mithril silver. I just tended to focus on the very edges of the model so that I can give a slight highlight to the entire model. However, after looking at photos of Drago, I realized that Drago tends to be a little bit older than most Grey Knights. Therefore, his armor has a little bit more of a blue tinge to it. Therefore, I watered down Azurman Blue Wash again and just gave a little wash over the entire model. But as I said, I watered it down greatly, about four parts water to one part Azurman Blue Wash and went over the entire armor just to give it a little bit more of a blue tinge. I then started the browns by painting the books, purity seals, banners, and scrolls using Kemri Brown foundation paint. This makes a great foundation color for all the browns on the model. I then highlighted all the brown areas using bleached bone and then doing a watered down Devlin mud wash on all of these parts. These two steps really bring out the detail and do a natural highlighting on all the scrolls, the books, and the purity seals. I painted all the red parts of the model, including the banner, the clothing, purity seals, and books, with red gore paint. I really like to start off with a dark red and then later highlight with a lighter red, such as blood red. Therefore, the next obvious step would be then to highlight all the red parts using blood red paint. Overall, I really like the color combination of using red gore in the background and then blood red as the highlight color, as you can see on the banner here and the shield here. As the GW metal paints are very thin, you always want to layer them up. Uh, a little bit at a time. So the great way to start all the golds is to paint them all dwarf bronze. This will set a great foundation color for all the gold sections. I then gave all the gold parts a black-brown wash with a one-to-one -one mix of bada black to double mud. This will really bring out all the details in all the gold areas. Lastly, I did two highlights on the gold, uh, first with shining gold and the next with burnished gold. This will really give all the edges of all the gold parts a really nice detail and allow them to pop. 
So that's it for part one. Thank you everyone for watching my videos and stay tuned for the second half of how to paint Lord Keldor Drago painting tutorial.